The Book of Exodus Chapter 1 Now these are the names of the sons of Israel who came into Egypt. Every man in his household came with Jacob. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. All the souls who came out of Jacob's body were seventy souls, and Joseph was in Egypt already. Joseph died, as did all his brothers in all that generation. The children of Israel were fruitful, and increased abundantly, and multiplied, and grew exceedingly mighty, and the land was filled with them. Now there arose a new king over Egypt who didn't know Joseph. He said to his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. And it happened that when any war breaks out, they also join themselves to our enemies and fight against us and escape out of the land. Therefore they set taskmasters over them to afflict them with their burdens. They built storage cities for Pharaoh, Python and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and the more they spread out. They were grieved because of the children of Israel. The Egyptians ruthlessly made the children of Israel serve, and they made their lives bitter with hard service, in mortar and in brick, and in all manner of service in the field, all their service in which they ruthlessly made them serve. The king of Egypt spoke to the Hebrew midwives, of whom the name of the one was Shifra, and the name of the other Pua. And he said, When you perform the duty of a midwife to the Hebrew women, and see them on the birth stool, if it is a son, then you shall kill him, but if it is a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God, and didn't do what the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the baby boys alive. The king of Egypt called for the midwives and said to them, why have you done this thing and have saved the men children alive? The midwife said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women aren't like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and grew very mighty. It happened, because the midwives feared God, that he gave them families. Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, you shall cast every son who is born into the river, and every daughter you shall save alive. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan, and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness for forty days, being tempted by the devil. He ate nothing in those days. Afterward, when they were completed, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. The devil leading him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. The devil said to him, I will give you all this authority and their glory, for it has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I want. If you therefore will worship before me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. He led him to Jerusalem, and set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, cast yourself down from here, for it is written, He will give his angels charge concerning you to guard you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest perhaps you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus, answering, said to him, It has been said, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. When the devil had completed every temptation, he departed from him until another time. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and news about him spread through all the surrounding area. 
he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. He came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. He entered, as was his custom, into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and stood up to read. The book of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. He opened the book, and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken-hearted, to proclaim release to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to deliver those who are crushed, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. He closed the book, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began to tell them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All testified about him, and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth, and they said, Isn't this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will tell me this parable. Physician, heal yourself. Whatever we have heard done at Capernaum, do also here in your home town. He said, Most assuredly I tell you, no prophet is acceptable in his home town. But truly I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was shut up three years and six months, when a great famine came over all the land. Elijah was sent to none of them, except to Zarephath, in the land of Sidon, to a woman who was a widow. There were many lepers in Israel in the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, except Naaman the Syrian. They were all filled with wrath in the synagogue as they heard these things. They rose up, threw him out of the city, and led him to the brow of the hill that their city was built on, that they might throw him off the cliff. But he, passing through the midst of them, went his way. He came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee. He was teaching them on the Sabbath day, and they were astonished at his teaching, for his word was with authority. In the synagogue there was a man who had a spirit of an unclean demon, and he cried out with a loud voice, saying, Ah, what have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. When the demon had thrown him down in their midst, he came out of him, having done him no harm. Amazement came on all, and they spoke together one with another, saying, What is this word? For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. News about him went into every place of the surrounding region. He rose up from the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. Simon's mother-in-law was afflicted with a great fever, and they begged him for her. He stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. Immediately she rose up and served them. When the sun was setting, all those who had any sick with various diseases brought them to him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. Demons also came out from many, crying out and saying, You are the Christ, the Son of God. Rebuking them, he didn't allow them to speak, because they knew that he was the Christ. When it was day, he departed and went into an uninhabited place, and the multitudes looked for him, and came to him, and held on to him, so that he wouldn't go away from them. But he said to them, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other cities also. For this reason I have been sent. He was preaching in the synagogues of Galilee. Chapter 18 Then Bildad the Shuhite answered, How long will you hunt for words? Consider, and afterwards we will speak. Why are we counted as animals, which have become unclean in your sight? You who tear yourself in your anger, shall the earth be forsaken for you, or shall the rock be removed out of his place? Yes, the light of the wicked shall be put out, the spark of his fire shall not shine. The light shall be dark in his tent, his lamp above him shall be put out. The steps of his strength shall be shortened, his own counsel shall cast him down. For he is cast into a net by his own feet, and he wanders into its mesh. A snare shall take him by the heel, a trap shall lay hold on him. A noose is hidden for him in the ground, a trap for him in the way. Terror shall make him afraid on every side, and shall chase him at his heels. 
His strength shall be famished. Calamity shall be ready at his side. The members of his body shall be devoured. The firstborn of death shall devour his members. He shall be rooted out of his tent where he trusts. He shall be brought to the king of terrors. There shall dwell in his tent that which is none of his. Sulfur shall be scattered on his habitation. His roots shall be dried up beneath. Above shall his branch be cut off. His memory shall perish from the earth. He shall have no name in the street. He shall be driven from light into darkness and chased out of the world. He shall have neither son nor grandson among his people, nor any remaining where he sojourned. Those who come after shall be astonished at his day, as those who went before were frightened. Surely such are the dwellings of the unrighteous. This is the place of him who doesn't know God. It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you, and such sexual immorality as is not even named among the Gentiles, that one has his father's wife. You are puffed up, and didn't rather mourn, that he who had done this deed might be removed from among you? For I most assuredly, as being absent in body but present in spirit, have already, as though I were present, judged him who has done this thing. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, you being gathered together, and my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, are to deliver such a one to Satan, for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Your boasting is not good. Don't you know that a little yeast leavens the whole lump? Purge out the old yeast, that you may be a new lump, even as you are unleavened. For indeed Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed in our place. Therefore let us keep the feast not with old yeast, neither with the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I wrote to you in my letter to have no company with sexual sinners, yet not at all meaning with the sexual sinners of this world, or with the covetous and extortioners, or with idolaters, for then you would have to leave the world. But as it is, I wrote to you not to associate with anyone who is called a brother who is a sexual sinner, or covetous, or an idolater, or a slanderer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner. Don't even eat with such a person. For what have I to do with also judging those who are outside? Don't you judge those who are within? But those who are outside God judges. Put away the wicked man from among yourselves. <laughs> 